Hi and welcome to NBC. Once again it's Neil Bramson speaking. Today's topic is about green and green energy we've talked about. Today we'll talk about green construction. Well green construction practices aim to cut back the environmental effect of buildings. So the very first rule is the greenest construction is a construction that doesn't get constructed. It's obvious. New construction almost always degrades a construction site. So not construction is pre preferred to green construction. The second rule is every construction ought to be as little as possible. The third rule is do not contribute to sprawl. The tendency for metro policies is spread out in a disordered fashion regardless how much grass you put on your roof, regardless how energy efficient windows, etc. If you contribute to sprawl, you've defeated your purpose. Urban infill sites are preferred to suburban greenfield sites. Well, going green construction. This is an insider's look at the trend in green construction. Well, construction comes with a big amount of land according to the National Resources Inventory. Just about 107 million acres of land in the US is developed. Another study was released out of publication that calculated that existing buildings are responsible for more than 40, I repeat, 40% of the world's entire primary energy consumption and 24% of global CO2, CO2 emissions. Well, the idea of sustainable development may be traced to the energy, particularly fossil oil prices, and the environmental pollution interests in the 70s. Well, the green construction movement in the United States originated from the need and want for more energy effective and environmental friendly construction, uh, construction patterns. Well, there are a number of motives for green construction, including environmental, economical, and social advantages, all the same. Modern sustainability initiatives demand an integrated and synergetic design to both new construction and in the retrofitting of subsisting structures or structures, also known as sustainable design. Well, this plan of attack integrates the construction life cycle with every green practice employed with a design purpose produce a synergy among the practices utilised. Well, green construction draws together a huge array of practices, stra uh, strategies and skills to cut back and finally eliminate the impacts of buildings on the environment and human wellness. It frequency, uh, frequently emphasises the capitalising of renewable resources. Example. Util utilizing sunshine through passive solar, active solar and photovoltaic gear and, and utilizing plants and trees with green roofs, rain gardens and reduction of rain runoff. A lot of additional strategies are utilized like utilizing low impact construction materials or utilizing packed gravel or permeable concrete rather than establish concrete or asphalt to enhance replacement of groundwater. But while the patterns or te uh, technologies employed in green construction are perpetually evolving and might differ from area to area, basic principles persist from which the technique is derived. Well, the essence of green construction is an optimization of one or more of these pre uh, precepts. Likewise, with the right synergistic design. Individual green construction technologies might work together to create a greater effect. On the aesthetical side of green architecture or sustainable design is a doctrine of designing a construction that's in harmony with the natural features and resources surrounding the site. Well, there are a lot of key steps in designing sustainable buildings. Green construction materials from local sources, cut back loads, optimize systems and render on site renewable power. 
Well, what does green construction mean? Green construction is more than insulated windows, solar, hot water heaters and energy appliances. It's likewise a technique in which construction and demolition waste is disposed. Those who have engaged in big construction projects or merely walked around the construction site may testify that the amount of waste sealed in is staggering. Nail filled 2x4s, pot cans, broken drywall and scrap folding materials litter the job site. But frequently little effort has been made to sort out the debris into functional and usable piles. But what does this mean? The terms of waste management and conservation are cut back. Recycle and reuse in a green project. These three policies are applied from beginning to end. Lead certification, along with its accompanying tax savings. It's only allotted to those projects that may prove that over 50% of any waste matter generated because of construction or demolition didn't find its way into landfill. It's decently sold in a thrown away of waste material is more expensive than ditching pocket load after pocket load into a trash bin. This is an additional expense, but with more municipalities requiring significant deposits are it only refunded if an arranged amount of waste is diverted from landfills. It is a necessary expense. Well, all I'm saying is decently trained, trained or training construction workers in on-site separation make greatly cut back expenses affiliated with green waste disposal. Well, recycling has gotten to be a general phrase that covers all alternative means of refuse disposal. However, its true meaning is really specific. Recycling is the act of transforming a material into a wholly fresh product. It's the most ineffective and least cost effective of the rules. Transporting waste materials to repossessing centres is an expensive procedure. As ineffective as recycling is, it is preferable to dumping waste in a landfill, scrapping shingles and repossessing as into asphalt. Cardboard may be repossessed into other paper products. Re reprocess the metal to form into nails that may be utilised in later construction pro uh, proposals. Contractors may save cash by pre sorting any recyclables before taking them to a facility. A great deal of the wood utilised for scaffolding during the rough framing procedure might be utilised to construct garden sheds. The wood isn't pretty but it's still usable. Broken brick, bricks are utilised for backfill. Well, a lot of rehabbers depend upon found wood flooring to give their projects of vintage or antique feeding. Well, all of these are illustrations of uh, reusing waste materials rendered in construction and demolition. Reusing doesn't call for any processing of materials. Materials may frequently be sold directly from the construction site. And with measure, measure planning, the most potent and consistent of green measures may be carried out. Reducing the amount of materials necessary and the amount of waste rendered solves the issue of construction waste before there's an issue. Drywall, wood and car wood are the most common waste on the job site. It's easy to cut back the amount of waste if heat fuel consideration is given to precisely how much is needed per job. This reduces expenses and, and encourages overall efficiency on the job site. Suitable planning around available materials sets up productivity. Well, green construction isn't cheap, but it's a new standard. Hey, people, thanks for uh, catching up on just a bit, a little bit about uh, green construction. I could go on for days and days or hours and hours. But I thought I'd just leave a little tidbit above and see how it compares to the green standard for green construction. Thank you.
Thank you for watching one of our videos. If you like the video, please hit the like button. If you would like to see more videos, hit the subscribe button. And if you have something to say, please leave a comment. Thank you once again. From your NBC team. Hashtag NBC Media.